so today uh, now in this video we'll uh, start design of laterally supported beam so i solve one problem and will show all the steps how to solve this problem one by step by steps okay so we already discussed the design step general steps in the video three or four okay so if you watch that videos you can understand easily about this stuff so now we'll go for problem so design a simply supported beam of clear span 3.5 meters effectively held laterally throughout the length the beam is supported on walls of thickness 300 mm and carries a udl of 10 kN per meter so okay so once we read the question you have to understand and we'll write the given data so what is given here the given the load is given 10 kN per meter okay and the given the wall thickness or or we say bearing is 300 mm the given clear span actually 3.5 mm so we require actually effective span so effective span nothing but half of the wall thickness from one side the opposite side also we take half or you can directly can add 3.5 into wall thickness so we will get the effective span that is indicated by small f now here they given only udl lie load is given they do not given dead load so in case of assuming sulfate of the beam so uh, assuming sulfate of the beam it is very difficult because the beam dimension is not there so very easy you have to assume the assume the sulfate of the beam 0.8 to 1 kilonewton per meter square or meter so most of the cases what happened we have to assume directly one or you can assume 0.8 or some books they are assuming from 0.8 or 1 so it is better you assume the uh, sulfate of the beam from 0.8 to 1 kilonewton per meter square or you can say kilonewton per meter okay so once you get uh, assume that we have to calculate total load so total load nothing but dead load plus lie load or sulfate plus lie load that is dead load is given 10 i assume has sulfate uh, is 1 so total you got 11 kilonewton per meter so once you get the fact uh, this, uh, this uh, working load you have to multiply with the factor of safety so factor of safety you already know so factor of safety is always 1.5 so working load multiply with factor of safety say so 11 into 1.5 so we'll get the value is 16.5 kN per meter this is your factor load this is about your design step 1 in this step you can calculate the load factor load so next in the second step we have to calculate design bending moment and shear force die okay. so we already know the beam is simply supported we already cal simply supported how you calculate maximum bending moment how you calculate bend bend uh, maximum bending moment is equal to that is indicated by mu mu is equal to w u l square by 8 so you already know w u you know the value of l square you know the you know the value of okay so w u is given 16.5 sorry we calculated and the effective span is given 3.8 square divided by 8 you get the value of 29.78 kN per meter or you can make it as 30 this is nearby 30 so i'll make mu is equal to 30 kN. So after that, design shear force also they given the value is WUL by 2. So now W you already know, you just substitute the values, so you will get 29 kN. So we will get the value of design bending moment and design shear force. So now we have to calculate plastic suction modulus that is given by ZPZ is equal to moment divided by FI into gamma I into gamma m now moment m is nothing but design moment don't take as working moment it is designed or factor moment that is indicated by mu here is indicated by m okay so m you got 30 into 10 to because fi is given in newton per mm square that's why you have to multiply with moment uh, moment should be converted into newton mm so that's why you multiply with 10 to 6 into factor of safety that is will get from page number 30 is 800 2007 so after calculating this the zp you got 132 into 10 to 3 mm cube now i will convert into centimeter cube why i convert into centimeter cube because when you're referring a is 800 table page number for uh, table 46 annexure x sorry annexure h then we uh, the values of zpz is given actually 130 
in the centimeter cube so we have to convert into centimeter cube now we have to choose a section from another h table 47 the section i section which having zpz value more than 132 you can't we take as same we take as more than 132 so i selected actually let us try ismb 175 the values is given 145 145.4 four cm cube i'll show you how you select this value by using is code okay so i already say by referring is 800 page number i not mention table 46 anesthesia x so i'll open that book so it is given the last so just wait i'll show you okay so here Then go for the at the end. Here they given table forty six. How many table forty six is given? So number of pages are more. So I start from one thirty eight and extra edge. Okay. So one thirty eight. Sorry. Ah, one thirty eight page number. So now here when you check the table, here they given different different values. Here they given number of designation. They given IS WM IS LB is combination. Okay. They given weight, sectional area, depth of section, width of flange. thickness of flange thickness of web and radius of geration and they given section modulus zd zez they given zpz so we calculate actually plastic modulus so here they given the values so here is given the centimeter cube that's why we have taken convert into centimeter cube now we have to check the value which is near to greater than 132 not less than 132 is greater than 132 so here we check the values are more so now i'll go for second page page number 139 here also i'll got more values so but here i'll check 143 i'll got here okay so i'll checking here so now when you check the page number 1 here 140 or 141 the value will get here so okay so now the value will get 145 So I have taken actually 143 or 145. I am just confirming. Okay, so he, in this table you have to check the values, and you have to check the value should be greater than 132 centimeter. So now I will check here which value I have taken here. I have taken here actually 145 point ISMB 175 I have taken. So I just check in the table. ISMB 175. So here ISMC MB MB ISMB 125 175. Here you can check. You are not getting here. So I think is getting the next page. ISMB 175. WB. So here ISMB 75. Okay. So here the given IS. MB 175. They are given load, so I'll go scrolling here, so we get the value of 175, 90. Here they given 6, 8.6. Okay, 5.5 thickness of the web. They given. Okay, so now I'll got 186, 144. This. Okay, we now we check this value. I got 144.5. That is the value of Z P. Z. So section models the value will get. So now we have to try the section of IS MB 175 at the rate of the section models plastic section modulus is 145.4 centimeter cube. Once you get these values, we have to take from the steel table. We have to take the values of sectional properties. Which are the sectional properties? Have to take here the given H. Have to take so many values. Have to take H, B. L W T W T F N R one. So what is R one here? So R one I'll tell you. In the, uh, then you have to take I Z Z. I have to take R is equal to R one and Z D Z that you will get from the uh, I S eight hundred and Z P Z also will get from the I I S eight hundred. Z P Z I'll show you here. The value will get here one forty four. Okay, I'll show where I show here. Okay, page number. You have to take the both the values. One is sectional modulus, Z D Z, and plastic modulus. Okay, so both the values you have to note down from the steel table. And 
R1 value will get from the code. So now this is I section. I using uh, P6, which is available for me. Okay. So now here, this is I section. Okay. So now here they indicate actually. See the diagram. They given here R1. So R1 value will get from the code B. So here they given I Z Z value is given. So I Z Z value also will get from the steel table. I uh, I S 800 only. Okay. So now here they given. See. So R1 value and R2 value. We require actually R1 value. Why we require R1 value? Because see when you see the diagram. Here we have semi curve here. That should be detected from the when you calculating the value of t, and when you go for the rest of the R1 also value required. Okay, so now I Z Z value also get from the steel table. I show here radius of gyration section modulus section. Okay, okay. So now all the values we get from steel table as well as uh, I S 800. Okay, and steel table. So once you get the section. Now we'll go for section classification. Section classification, where you do uh, already shown the figure, page no, table number two, page number eighteen. Now we get the values of. Now we have to calculate B into T F value. So that is we already know. So now we have to check the value which is lies, whether it is lies in plastic or it is lies in compact. So both the section we can design. So according to this problem, the value is lies in the. Compact uh, plastic section. So I'll want to if want I'll show you this. So page number eighteen. So page number eighteen. If you show here page number eighteen, I'll show here. Okay. So now here, you can understand this. So this is page number eighteen. So eighteen here they given actually. See here, page number eighteen. The values lies between nine point four and. 84. Uh, okay, there he was given. T is equal to DW. Okay, so now from this, from this you can identify the section. Here, what happened? How you taken B? B is not 45 exactly. The B is should be. We have to take B is equal to H H minus 2 into T F plus R1. The value have to take here. They given here. I taken two into T F. You have to take actually one seventy five into two into T F minus R one because we have to re reduce that area also to get D value. So here they given. So here we check I section here. See here they consist after curvatures. That's why you have to take R value. You have to detect from the B. Okay. So now once you get this. Or you can uh, use this also. No, the, no need of uh, calculating that. It is also e easy. This also easy. So once you get the confirmation that the class, the section is classified as plastic, now we'll go for check for shear strength. So by referring page number fifty-nine that I already show, the shear strength is given twenty-eight. So now we have to check whether it is greater than VD or it is less than VD. So now VD you can calculate. They given the formula V n divided by gamma. I am not. That is given page number fifteen. I will show you the steel uh, in the code. So now page number fifty-nine. They are given in the page number fifty-nine. So page number fifty-nine. So I will show. You. Okay. So now I will come for page number forty-seven. Go more down. Seventy-seven. Okay. Now I'll check. Page number fifty-nine. So this is the page number fifty-nine. Okay. So now we'll go for condition. They're given here. Nominal plastic shear resistance can be calculated by Vn is equal to Vp. What is Vp? Is the given Av divided by F W F Y W divided by root three. This is we have to calculate. So here they given F W V nothing but it is same as F Y. A V is the shear area. Okay. So what is the shear area here? We have to calculate the shear area nothing but H divided H into T W. So we'll get the values of V N. When you substitute here V P, we'll get the value of V P. 
so now once we get the value of vp or vd so then you have to check the value of v is less or more so now here v is 28 and v d is 126 it means that we have to multiply with again 0.6 so check whether it is low share or high share okay when you check here so 0.6 vd the value is 75 that is greater than v so it means that the case is low shear why you require to calculate the bending moment equation so the next step you calculate is the inside that this is in low shear case okay once you got this now you have to calculate check for design capacity or design bending moment that is md that uh, md formula i already show in the page number 53 so i want you can show one more time so page number 53 so page number 53 is the given formula here so here they given see the case is given here when the factor design shear force does not exist 0.6 into vd the md is the formula you can calculate so bd is bp same formula you can apply here and you can calculate the md value so once you calculate the md value now you have to check whether md is greater than moment which is you calculate ultimate moment or factor moment or design moment. and it is showing here it is greater than moment also and check the condition whether it is less than 1.4 the given condition zd fi and gamma I. zd will get from the steel table okay you get from the steel table elastic plastic okay so once you got this you go for check for deflection check for deflection you already know it is a simply supported beam the equation is given 5 divided by 384 wl square 4 divided by izz so you can get the <coughs> deflection value <coughs> Once you get deflection value, you have to check the allowable deflection that is given by L divided by 300 for simply supported beam, L divided by 250 for cantilever beam. So here they given L divided by 300. The calculation is say the allowable is greater and maximum is so the allowable is greater. The maximum deflection is greater than uh, actual. So it is say it is safe. So similarly, we have to calculate web coupling. Web coupling we can calculate from page number 67. They given the formula here. Fw is equal to B1 plus N2 into Tw into F Fiw divided by gamma M0. So now stiff so B1 we have to assume. Actually, the value some cases is given the problem, some cases is not given. So if it is not given, how, how much value you can assume? So actually they start with 0 to 100. So maximum cases will assume actually the value between 100 to uh, sorry 80 to 100 mm or you can assume 70 mm also it is actually the given 0 to 100 because we can't assume 0 and we can't assume less than uh, 50 50 60 so better you assume the value between 70 80 19 or you can directly assume has 100 so any value you can have uh, i assume near to 100 that is b1 is 90 mm so n2 how you calculate n2 is given 2.5 tf plus r1 this given in the code book once you check page number 67 will get the value fw you got that is greater than shear that then it is okay similarly web buckling also you have to calculate n1 is given h by 2 okay then so here again b1 so b1 you can calculate and d value you can calculate here d is given 175 into tf plus r1 so this formula is also available in the code if you're not available you should remember this so you get the lambda so lambda is nothing but it, that is where uh, KL by R ratio. So uh, you can use this formula to calculate 0.7 into T root 12 divided by T root. Or you can directly can use one more formula is that 2.5 into H divided by T W. That also we can use. So you can use any other formula. So you get the values of uh, lambda. Once you get the lambda, that is, then now you have to check the table number 9C because when you designing the beam, you always check beam is consists of a uh, Call, uh, slab also so it is a build up section so for build up section the use always 9c okay so once you get the 9c you get the ratio fcd value so you can calculate the fc dw and this should be less than the it should be less than the uh, design uh, shear force design shear force then only your problem is correct okay this is all your okay this is your about the first problem